एवरीवन एंड वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ समथिंग इंटरेस्टिंग टू लर्न ऑन आवर चैनल प्रोग्रामिंग हब आई एम सिद्धेश जोगलेकर एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट हाउ टू बिल्ड द ब्रेन विद इन टेन मिनट्स वाओ कैन यू रियली बिल्ड द ब्रेन विद इन टेन मिनट्स इज इट अ फैसिनेटिंग सब्जेक्ट I think 95% of you would say that it is impossible to build the brain within 10 minutes and that is my thought of the day at any point of time i want all of you my followers of programming hub to never underestimate yourself you should believe that good things can come from you you can make good things there has to be perseverance there has to be dedication and most important all of you should have confidence in your own abilities never underestimate yourself with that in mind let's get started and figure out if we can create a brain in 10 minutes first creating a brain in 10 minutes is not a problem that we are solving here right now in the 2020s this has been tried to be solved since ages and the concept or the field is called as artificial neural networks many decades ago artificial neural networks were developed to mimic the learning capabilities of humans and animals we shall see how artificial neural networks have evolved over the years and then use tensorflow which is an open source library which is popular in the industry to demonstrate creation of a brain but before that i want you to see this video right here in the comment section below as a machine that changed the world some clips of it will play right now as well go again with me tonight is professor jerome b wiesner director of the research laboratory of electronics at mit dr wiesner what really worries me today is what's going to happen to us if machines can think and what interests me specifically is can they Well, that's a very hard question to answer. If you'd asked me that question just a few years ago, I'd have said it was very far-fetched. And today, I just have to admit, I don't really know. I suspect if we come back in four or five years, I'll say, sure, they really do think. Or if you do note that they have been thinking about artificial neural networks for quite a long time. First, let's look at the data that we are going to use to tackle this challenge. Can you see this? This is a graphic full of apparel types now let's look at the data that we are going to use to create a brain in 10 minutes first here are the graphics we are going to tackle this challenge that almost seemed impossible decades ago which is image classification with computer vision can you see these images this image has a lot of different apparel types men's apparel women's apparel and so on for this i use this particular code to demonstrate these images properly next we are going to look at the steps being followed neural networks will attempt to copy the human learning technique of trial and error nobody needs to understand what trial and error is we learn by trying if there is an error we correct that error and then try again that is exactly what our neural networks are going to try our artificial at the brains will attempt to guess what kind of clothing we are showing it with a flash card and then we will give the answer which will help the computer learn from its successes and mistakes next we will also set aside a portion of our data to make sure that we quiz our neural networks to make sure that they understand the concepts that we are trying to teach it as opposed to them memorizing the answers to study the questions after all neural network should be able to give answers to an unrelated data set as well right the study data is often called as a training data set and the quiz data is often called as validation data set as fashion mnist is a popular data set it's already included with the tensorflow library let us load it into our coding environment and then take a look at it let's get started we are starting with train_images and train_labels plotting one of these images or labels as below first we import the matplotlib file lib as our library then we ask is ask it to sort of load these labels so labels are basically the answers the images will be the questions and labels will be the answers and we train the neural network 
with answers initially over a period of time the neural network is expected to answer the images and the labels related to it themselves so labels are basically answers that's the point to be noted to make it easier let's have 10 categories simple 10 categories and each of those categories will have a label for example label 0 will be t-shirt or a top label 1 will be trouser label 4 will be coat label 6 will be shirt and label 9 will be ankle now let's run this for run this code and see if we are correct yes so train underscore label bracket data idx let us run this code great now that you understood the concept that we have to first train the computer now let's go ahead and actually build a neuron first what is a neuron you ask well neuron is a fundamental building block to a neural network it's like neuron is a cell of the brain similarly in our case for artificial neural network neuron will be a building block just like how biological neurons send an electrical impulse under elect specific stimuli artificial neural networks will similarly result in a numerical output with a given numerical input we can break down the building of a neuron into three simple steps first step is defining the architecture second step is initiating training and third step is evaluating the model let's get started with step one. First, how will we define the architecture as you can see this is the structure of a neuron there is a nuclei there's a mitochondrion dendrite golgi apparatus cell body axon all of that right biological neurons transmit information with a mechanism which is similar to morse code you remember morse code right the language of ones and zeros the language that is used to communicate in many many places including military navy even space biological neurons receive electrical signals through dendrites okay, you can see the dendrites over here right and under the right conditions send an electrical ex impulse to the axon and out through the terminals it is recognized it is theorized the sequence and timing of these impulses play a large part in how information travels through the brain the sequence as well as timing most artificial neural networks have yet to capture this timing aspect of biological neurons and instead emulate the phenomenon with simple mathematical formulas so what i'm trying to tell you is we are still not completely successful in replicating a neuron but we are getting there so now what is the math of a neuron let us first use a simple linear regression function y is equal to mx plus b first neurons were attempted using this function what is x x will be the information that is coming through the dendrites and y will be the output through the terminals as the computer guesses more answers to the questions it will update the value of m and value of b neurons are often exposed to multivariate data we are going to build a neuron that takes each pixel value between 0 to 55 and then assign a weight which is equivalent to our m data scientists often this express this weight as w so for our first pixel let us give it the weight w0 then second pixel will have w1 and so on so our full equation becomes y is equal to w0 x0 plus w1 x1 plus w2 x2 plus dot 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 w255 x255 plus p now remember that each image is 28 pixel by 28 pixel and what we define right now is just one pixel so there are going to be so many different weights is it clear great a pixel value of 0 would be black and a pixel value of 255 will be white let us now look at the raw pixel values of the previous image that we got each number below will be assigned a weight now how to convert a number into a category after all the output of all this equation is going to be a number y is equal to mx plus b but here we want to classify different articles of clothing so how, how would we convert these, these numbers into a category well here's a simple approach we can make 10 neurons one for each article of clothing if the neuron assigned to trousers label number one has the highest output compared to the other neurons the model will guess trousers for the given article and so on and so forth for this we'll use a deep learning framework called keras which is included within tensorflow to make it simple we we'll use something called a sequential api which will help us to stack layers the list of operations we'll be applying through our data as it is fed through the in the below model we'll have two layers 
first layer is called flatter, which will convert multi-dimensional data into one-dimensional data. For example, a list of lists into a single list. You can imagine this, right? Many, 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 many lists are then converted into one single list. Next, we'll have dense, which is a row of neurons. Each neuron will have weight W for each input. In the example below, we'll use number 10 to place 10 neurons. We'll also define an input shape, which is the dimension of our data. In this case, our 28 by 28 pixels for each image. I hope this is clear. So here you go. This is what I will use. The number of classes is equal to train labels max plus one. Number of Then we'll define the model with Keras model. Input shape will be 28 by 28 pixels. And then we get an output something like this. An input layer of 28 by 28 pixels gets transformed into an output layer of 10 categories, which is the 10 different types of apparel. Sounds fascinating, isn't it? Yes. Step number two. Note that we still have only less time now. Step number two is how do we initiate training? We have a model set up, but how does it learn? Just like how students are scored when they take a test, we need to give the model a function to grade its performance. Every time the model gives an output, we should be able to grade it. Okay, you are 50% right, you are 100% right, you are 0% right, whatever it is. Such a function is called as a loss function. In this case, we are going to use a specific type of function, specific to our classification, called as sparse categorical cross, cross, ent cross entropy. What is sparse? Well, for this function, we'll, it refers to how our label is an integer index for our categories. Categorical. The function was made for classification. And finally, cross entropy. The more confident our model is, when it is, makes an incorrect guess, the worse the score will be. If the model is 100% confident, when it is wrong, we'll have a score of negative infinity. That is how the model improves itself. Now, the linear output will be transformed into a probability, which can be interpreted as the model's confidence that a particular category is correct for the given input. That is how we'll train the model well on its own. So now, how do we initiate the training? This type of loss function works well for our case because it grades each type of neurons simultaneously. If all our neurons give a strong signal that they are the correct label, we'll need to a way to tell them that they can't all be right, correct? For us humans, we can add additional metrics to monitor, monitor how well our monitor is learn, model is learning. For example, if maybe the loss is low, but what if the accuracy is not high? So we'll use an optimizer with a code something like this. Now we come to step number three. How do we evaluate the model? This is really the moment of truth, right? The below fit method will help us both to study the model as well as quiz it. An epoch is one review of the training data set. Just like how school students might need to review a flashcard multiple times before the concept clicks, same is with our models. Even if the model is wrong the first time, no problem. You should keep training the model, keep improving it such that the accuracy goes to as close to 100% as possible. After each epoch, the model is quizzed with the validation data. Let's watch it work hard and improve. Can you see this? So here I've given it five epochs, give the verbose equal to true, and then ask it for how well it has performed. Finally, let's come to the prediction part. It's now time to graduate our model and let it enter the real world. We can use the predict method to see the output of our model on a set of images, regardless of if they were in the original data sets or not. Please note that Keras expects a batch or a multiple data set points when making a prediction. To make a prediction on a single point of data, it should be converted into a batch of one data point. Below are the predictions for the first 10 models items in our training data set. So use this code to predict the data. Can you see this? Great. So this is how you can make a brain in 10 minutes. Is it 100% accurate or 100% perfect? Answer is no. But over a period of time, the model will improve itself and it will use its computer vision to identify what type of apparel it is. While this model does significantly better than random guessing, it has a long way to go before it beats humans at recognizing clothing. How does it, how does it do it? Well, it is for you data scientists and all of you learners at Programming Hub to figure out how it can beat humans at recognizing images. To continue listening to more such content related to programming and the fascinating world of AI, ML, 
and how programming can change all our lives. Keep following and keep seeing Programming Hub. Hit that subscribe icon and click on the bell icon to get notifications about our latest content that is published every week for so many, many, many years together. See you again soon.